I used to teach youth group, and I would talk from King James to the youth, and uh, uh, one guy come to the church, and he watched me, and he said, you can't keep speaking King James to the youth. They don't, they don't speak that language. And I said, I said but I do. <laughs> and so if I'm going to recite a scripture verse, it's going to be in King James, because I started reading the Bible when I was uh, 11 years old. I started reading the Bible, and I've been reading it every year since then. And, and sometimes I about eight months or so, I read the whole Bible front to back, and I just go front to back, and I just keep going. I never stop. Uh, just, just keep on plugging way through there because I, I believe that God, uh, the, your relationship with God is based solely, not solely, but not completely, but largely on your, uh, your reading time, your, your time in the Word of God, your nose in the pages, between the covers. I think it's so important uh, that you, that you realize that the Holy Spirit, when He speaks to us, He speaks the Word of God to you. Amen? And so we want to trust God in this uh, area today. And, then, and I, I, would, I would like you to, if you're here in the room, let's stand up together and let's read these, uh, these uh, three verses together. And it's uh, 1 Kings 19, verse 19. And we're going to start right there. And I, I want to expect you to read with your outside voice. Okay? So you ready? That means with your diaphragm, okay? Uh, well, on the count of three, <laughs> if you have it, I'll wait. If you don't have it, I'll wait. You got it? And so, 1 Kings 19, verse 19, it says, And so he departed thence and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen. I feel like I'm reading by myself. <laughs> uh, before him, and he with the twelve. And Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah, and said, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow thee. And he said unto him, Go back again, for what have I done to thee? Uh, in verse 21, And he returned back from him, and took a yoke of oxen, and slew them, and boiled their flesh with the instruments of the oxen, and gave unto the people, and they did eat, and then he arose and went after Elijah and ministered unto him. So say this with me, can't go back. Can't go back. So let's just pray. Father, I pray that you, you give us wisdom, to hear, ears to hear, eyes to see, and a heart to understand something brand new from the Word of God today. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. On the way to your seat, turn to your neighbor and just tell him, say, let's go. Let's go. And so today... Um, I don't want us to go with the, uh, with the disease to please, okay? We talked about that last time, because some of us have a disease to please, right? We want to please everybody. We need to go, though, where God has called us, amen? We have to go, uh, and we can't ever go back. Once you turn and walk with God, I believe that we can turn and go back, but we should uh, always go towards what God is doing in our life, amen? We should trust Him and, and we should burn some bridges in our life. I, I believe it's important sometimes to cut off some relationships. I believe it's important sometimes to stop watching some stuff in our life. I believe sometimes you've got to turn the news off. I believe sometimes you need a new set of friends. You need to go to a new church. I believe uh, that you need to get uh, around uh, a group of people that will help you grow. Amen? Grow in God. Don't, don't stay the same. Don't be satisfied staying the same. Uh, try a new, uh, 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 try a, a new, a new a dish, uh, uh, something to eat. Try something new. Say hi to somebody. Uh, don't don't frown all the time. Smile today. Amen. Uh, try try to trust God for for something brand new in your life. Amen. That always happens though when you do something new. Amen. So say that with me. I want to do something new. I, I want to talk to you today for a few moments about momentum. Okay. And momentum is something that, uh, that we all, I think, like to have. Has anybody ever rode, rode a roller coaster? <laughs> you ever get on a roller coaster and you know they got the little thing that goes all the way up to the top, you know, tick, 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 and you get all the way up high, and then your, your stomach almost starts to feel the drop, right, on the other side of that hill. It's like, like you get all the way up there, you know, tick, 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 and then uh, and you go down the other side, right? That's called momentum, right? 
You can't stop once you get over that hill. You're going to go. <laughs> you know, there's momentum in, in, in our walk with God, in our relationships on the planet. There's, there's momentum. But many of us, uh, maybe like me sometimes, have a tendency to sit and ask God to do something when we just keep sitting, okay? And, and so we need to get up, amen, and begin to walk with God, amen? And this is what Elisha, uh, Elisha did. Elisha, here come Elijah, walking by him one day. He was just going to pass right on by, and he just flicked his mantle over, uh, threw it over on top of Elisha, and Elisha had a decision to make at that moment. There was an opportunity, and he had a decision, okay? And he, so he went after Elijah, and he said, hey, let me go back and kiss my mom and dad, okay? So instead, he went back, and he, he took the, the, the yoke of oxen that he was plowing with, and he burnt, uh, uh, burnt them as a sacrifice. He had a party, okay? But he didn't, uh, he didn't leave room for his, his uh, chore, okay? He got off of what he was doing and started down a different road. Amen? I think it's very important to know that, that movement, right, over content is important in our life, right? We need to have some movement, all right? Everything in your life, in your body, if it doesn't move, you got some troubles. <laughs> if everything stops moving, like if your heart skips one beat, you're in trouble, okay? If, 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 if you're, you don't breathe in and breathe out like you're supposed to, you got some problems, amen? If you put food in all the time, but it never comes out, you're going to have some problems, amen? So there, you, you need movement, amen? Say it with me, I need movement. I need movement. So, so I believe that, uh, that, that God directs not just our step, okay, but our destination. I believe that God has got a, a destination in mind for us. I believe that he, he waits for me to take a step sometimes toward Him, and then he, he starts to reveal that destination as I go, amen? I don't, think, I don't think God, at least God doesn't speak to me like that. He doesn't tell me everything, okay? He'll tell me the next step, okay? And, and sometimes if we don't know the next step, it's important to go back to what he told you to do last, okay? Um, what did he tell you to do last? Be a, be a good husband, be a, be a good partner, amen? Be, a, be a, uh, a good worker, okay? Go to church, read your Bible, pray a little bit, worship God. Uh, those are some of the uh, good things that we can, those are starting points, right? But I want God to do more, amen, with my life. I want him to do more with, with, with us, okay? Uh, because God is, uh, let's just put some adjectives. He's a shepherd. Right? He's our shepherd. Can you say that with me? God is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. You know, you know what I like about that word shepherd? It, it, it reminds me that I'm a sheep. <laughs> Did you know that sheep are not that smart? If you really look up, they have to be led everywhere they go. Okay? They got to be led to the, to the field where they're going to eat. They got to be taken back into the pen over here. They got to, they, they, they walk around and if they let, if you let it go too much before you shear them, they get all big like this, <laughs> all blowed up and they get tangled up and stuff. They're just not that smart. They need to be led. Amen. This is why uh, Psalms 23 is so important that, that the Lord is my shepherd. I need to be led. Maybe we could say that together. I need to be led. Amen? I don't, I don't have all the answers. I think that's so, so good right there. If we could just uh, come to a place where we understand that we don't have all the answers. Amen? I, I haven't got enough knowledge yet to know everything. Amen? I still need to go to the, to the God of heaven, the creator of heaven and earth. I've got to go to the shepherd so that I can be led. Amen? That's so important to do uh, and to remember that we, we also uh, have a God who is great. Amen? Woo. Can, can we just say that together? God is great. Like, like, think about the greatest thing you've ever done with your life and just say, you know what? God is greater than that. Amen? God is greater than the, the greatest circumstance of your life. You know those things that you can't fix? Those things you don't understand? I'm going to tell you, God is greater than those things. Amen? Even if I don't like it, He's still greater. Amen? Even if I don't understand it, He's still greater. Amen? God is the great I am. He's like, he's like greater than the, 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 the most pride you could ever have in anything in your life. Amen? Uh, uh, whenever you get this uh, little pride that rises up, just remember God is the great I am. Amen? He, he looked for another God and there was no other God. He is the only God. Amen? He is the I am. He said to Moses, He said, I am 
that I am. Amen? Uh, he's, he's always been and He'll always be. He, he, doesn't, he doesn't have to wait for the sun to come up or the sun to go down or for the economy to be right or the right president to be in the, in, the, in the office. He doesn't have to be there for any of those things because He is the great I am. Woo. I love God because He's also the Creator. Every time you feel the presence of God, God is trying to create something new in your life. He wants to do something new in your life. Maybe we could say that together. God, do something new in my life today. Amen? Do something new in my life. He's, he's leading us to, to bigger things. Ooh, not greater things, bigger things. <laughs> bigger trials. <laughs> Come on now. Come on, that trial yesterday, that one I went through last week, the one I went through last month, the one I went through three years ago, it's small today because God's got to bring a bigger trial into my life so that I can uh, get strengthened. Amen? You don't ever get stronger uh, when you're on the mountaintop. You get stronger when you're in the trial. Amen? You get stronger in those areas. So, so we trust God that if He's brought us to, me to a bigger enemy in my life, He's about to give me some more strength. Amen? So I can rise over that. That enemy will to be defeated also. Amen? Bigger thing. New things. We always want God to do a new thing, but are you really willing to stop the old things in your life? That's a real good question that we should ask ourselves. Am I willing to stop something old so I can get a new thing? Amen? And so part, part of growing is doing new things. <laughs> it's, it's very important that, that we learn to walk. It's very important that we learn to talk. It's very important that we learn to drive our car. It's very important that we learn a new skill to be a better worker. Amen? It's very important, otherwise uh, you'll always make minimum, minimum wage, okay? If you don't have a new skill, if you don't have something new in your life, God wants to take you to a new thing, right? Uh, do, try a new thing, amen? Amen! <laughs> Let me ask you the question, what's new in your life? That's a good prayer. Say, God, that's new. That's a new revelation. That's a new friend. <laughs> that, that's new, God. See, I want to see God give us a new thing. Amen? Amen. Hey, God speak to us, uh, uh, and He presents opportunities to us, uh, which we ignore. That's what we do. Most of the time we ignore what God brings new in our life because we don't like it. We want the old. Amen? I remember the good old days. I remember the good old days, right? But faith stirs you to move, just like Eli Elisha. Elisha was stirred to move. Amen? There should be something stirring up inside of you that will cause you to move today. Amen? That faith will stir you to move. Not, not the problems, okay? Problems have a tendency to keep you see, set right where you are. That's what they do. When, it, when a problem comes, we sit down, right? And we're like, oh, you know, it's not worth it anymore. I don't know why I, I keep on uh, taking her out on a date. I've been married for 38 years and it's just the uh, same old person, the same old thing. I'm just going to take her out and you know, spend all my money on, a, on nothing. And I'm not, I just don't understand. See, see I want to see something new in her. Amen? My wife. I want to see something new uh, in, in, in my relationship with God. So, so, so move. Amen? Move. 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 Say it with me. Move. 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 One, uh, one, one cure for a depression, because that's what happens when we sit. We get depressed. One great cure for depression is get busy. Amen? Start moving. Start doing something new. Amen? Start, start praying again. Start reading again. All right? Uh, uh, find another friend. Right? Uh, so Elijah had a problem. He was depressed. Before he came to see Elisha, he was depressed and he was re rehearsing the same speech over and over and over. I'm the only one God left. I'm the only one. I'm the only one that hasn't bowed my knee. I'm the only one. And, 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 and everybody else hates, hates you, God. And it's just me. Don't you love me, God? Because uh, nobody else loves me. And he was in a cave. That's where he was, all by himself. And he was uh, rehearsing the same speech over and over. And, and, and he was running away from what God had for him. But God just gave him something to do. That's what got Elijah out of the cave. Remember the little voice that spoke? It was a still, small voice. After the, the whirlwind and the wind and all this stuff come along, there was a still small voice that gave Elijah something to do. God, give me something to do. God, give me something to do today. God, won't you speak to me today so I can have something to do. Amen? So, so 
uh, hearing another voice, amen, is important in our life. I need to hear a new voice, amen? The voice of the Lord uh, needs to speak to me, amen? Not the voice of the trial, not the voice of everybody that's always said, you're never going to be good enough, because you know what I've had uh, a pastor before come and tell me? He said, uh, you can't preach, uh, and I keep on getting up here, amen? Because uh, God has called me to preach, amen? And He's given me a gift, amen? And it doesn't matter what a man would say to me, okay? Or what someone else would say, i got to do what God says, Amen? I gotta listen to that voice, amen. It's time to get moving. Amen. See, see, I, I used to I used to tell everybody like this sometimes in my life. It feels like there's this big semi in front of me. And it's in neutral, and we're going uphill, the motor don't work, and I start pushing and the thing starts moving just a little bit. And I look up over the top of the trailer and I see somebody up in the cab of the truck in there uh, turned around like this looking at me smiling and I see the brake lights go on. So, so sometimes the circumstance doesn't feel like it's going to move and you're struggling against it, right? And all this stuff is coming on. But I'm going to tell you, move anyways. Lean into the load anyways. Amen? Sometimes we got to bear up under some stuff. Sometimes we got to cut some stuff free. Sometimes we got to put a rock under the tire, go drag the person out the cab that's got their foot on the brake and throw them, throw them off in the ditch and say, you know what, you can't be here anymore. And then, and then we get back behind there and push again, okay? Sometimes you got to get a mechanic maybe to learn how to start the motor of the truck, okay? So they can actually get some smoke coming out of them pipes so we can actually move again, amen? But we got to move. I can't stay here anymore, amen? I got I to gotta get a, a little faith that rises up in me and says, you know what, I am not going to stay here anymore. Amen? I'm not going to put up with this anymore. See, and that's having faith that God is going to bring a greater thing into your life. Amen? Woo. Hearing means I have to be willing, though, to move. Amen? Hearing means I have to be willing to move. Walking with God... <laughs> is something we always talk about, but are we actually doing it? Amen? Walking with God, it takes, a, it takes faith. Because I walk by faith and not by sight. Amen? I, I have to hear what God says. Faith comes by hearing, right? And then walking comes by faith in what I heard. Amen? Not in what I see. <laughs> Turn to your neighbor. Give him a little side eye like that and say, I'm tired of looking at you. <laughs> I'm going to move. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> I'm going to move. <laughs> I'm going to move. You say, you, you do look good today, though. I mean, but uh, come on, let's go. Amen? <laughs> so, 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 uh, <laughs> say, just say it like this. Say, here I am, God. I'm listening because I want to move. Amen? I want to move. I want to move. I want to move. See, see, every, every relationship can grow sweeter and sweeter or bitter over time. Yeah. Did you, do you know that? I've lived long enough to know that sometimes my relationships with people get bitter over time, right? And not sweeter. Amen? Say, say this with me. I want to be sweet. I want to be sweet. And I want to be sweet with you. Amen? <laughs> Amen. And so, so you, you, know, you know, we used to say it like this. Uh, actually, I don't know who coined this phrase, but you're either going to get better or you're going to get bitter. You ever, you ever heard that statement before? Do you, do you know the only difference in the word better and bitter is the letter I? When you get so proud... Uh, in, in the circumstance or, or so proud that you're unwilling to change, that's what makes you bitter. Pride makes you bitter. All right? When you humble yourself, you will get better. Amen? That's such a good one right there. Amen? So, so say, it, say it with me. Bitter, bitter. or better? better? I just got to get out of the way. Amen? Get the eye out of the way. Amen? Come on. Amen? So, so, uh, uh, <laughs> every relationship is about we. Did you know that? Not about me. If you're in a relationship and it's all about me, you're in it for the wrong reason. Amen? God, God, Jesus Christ 
came to the earth to be in relationship with you. And it wasn't about him. It was about us. Amen? That's the same thing that has to happen in our life. It needs to be about we. Amen? The kingdom of God will come and move in your life if you get the eye out of the way. Amen? So it's time to move the eye out. Amen? Woo! Relationship with God looks like time in the Bible. I already said this before. I'm going to repeat it anyways. Okay, because if I repeat it about 11 times, you'll remember it. Uh, most of this, what I say today, you won't even remember. Even if you go back and look online, you won't remember it. You're going to go home and you're going to go, uh, uh, uh. But if you write something down, uh, you've you, you got a 70% chance of, of remembering what I say. And, and, and if you go back and tell somebody else about it, you've got a 90% chance of, of retaining that information inside of you. Information only comes in to transform you, amen? And, and once I transform, I can't go back, amen? Because I learned something new, amen? So, so, so word time, prayer time, worship time, and writing time is very important if we're going to change. Amen? If I'm going to get the eye out of the way, i got to go back to the Word of God. Amen? i got to set aside some time for the Word. Amen? Amen. Uh, okay. Take out your phone and set an alarm. Set an alarm for whatever time you have to. That's your appointment to read the Bible. Amen? Go ahead. Set the alarm. Go ahead. I'll let you. It's fine. Set an appointment. Because if you don't set an appointment, you'll never get there. I, used to tell, I always tell people this. If you're not on my calendar, I'm not going to be there. <laughs> so if you want me to be somewhere, yeah, I have to have it on my calendar, okay? Otherwise, I am going to forget it, okay? Because I'm busy, amen? And I'm going to tell you that y'all are busy too. You guys are so busy that you don't even have time for God in most of your life. Most of your daily life. Busy doing what? I don't know. Okay? But if you want to go a different direction, you have to make a plan. Amen? You have to make a plan. And you have to plan for God to be in your life. Amen? It starts with the Word. Amen? Don't just pray the prayers like this. Oh God, <laughs> fix them. <laughs> you see what they're doing today? What are you doing today? That's more important, amen? What they do doesn't matter. You can't control them anyways. My power doesn't come from them anyways. It comes from my relationship with God. He put me on this planet right here in this moment to change it, amen? I'm here to change something, amen? I'm here to make this place better, amen? I'm here to be a better worker. I'm here to have the, the only one in the room with a good attitude, amen? I'm the only one here that's got a smile on my face, amen? What do you mean we're all shoveling crap out of the barn? I don't know, but I'm still happy. The Lord is my shepherd. I'll follow Him always. Even if it smells like poop. <laughs> Amen? Okay. Y'all ain't never been nowhere it smells like poop before, but I'm telling you. <laughs> Genesis 22, verse 1. Uh, it came to pass after these things, that God did tempt Abraham. And he said unto Abraham, Behold, here am I, Abraham said. He said, he said unto him, Abraham, I always like this verse, because here's Abraham, and here's God. And he says, Abraham, and God said, and Abraham says, Here am I. It was a distinct call and a distinct response. Abraham said, uh, Yes, God. See, 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 I wonder if, if we had a good enough relationship with God where we could actually hear His voice, what would our response be? That's it. Will I go back? Yeah. Will I go back to what I was doing or will I go somewhere different? I, this is my question for you because the difference between sitting where you are and moving to somewhere new or having momentum in your life is a decision that you have to make. Amen? God is not going to make you make this decision. And this is why I bring you to this verse. He said, uh, uh, God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, do you know, do you know what God's voice sounds like? <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you know what it sounds like? It sounds like this. Abraham! <laughs> it could sound like, Abraham! Or it could sound like, Abraham. Do you know what his voice sounds like? Yeah. To me, it would be like this. Abraham! And Abraham's like, yes? 
you know what I, my inflection was to go up there, right? Because I have a question, like, why are you talking to me right now? <laughs> what you about to do in my life? Because that's what, it, that's what happens. You get, uh, yes, <laughs> here am I. <laughs> okay? And so, so that inflection makes a difference, right? Uh, because on how, how secure I am in that relationship. I believe that Abraham's relationship was very secure with God, right? He said, here am I. Okay? Because there was nothing hidden in Abraham's life that God didn't already know about. Amen? Very important. Amen? So, so he says, he said, behold, here am I. And aren't you glad, though, when you think about this for a second, that God knows your name? Whew. Aren't you glad that God knows your social security number? Aren't you glad that God knows your address? Aren't you glad that God knows every single detail of your life? Aren't you glad that you don't have to go to God and go, I wonder if he knows about that. I wonder if he knows about what I was looking at over there. I wonder if he, if he knows what I was thinking about over there. I, I, we don't have to go to God like that. God knows everything. Say, say it with me. God knows everything. I think you should say it again. God knows everything. Now, the next thing you should say is, sorry. Amen? I, forgive me. Amen? He knows everything, everything, everything. The stuff I hide from everybody, he knows that. The stuff you got in the closet, on the back shelf, underneath the, all the other stuff that nobody, hope, hope I never die, because they have to go clean that out and find it. He knows it, amen? 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 So, so, so. <laughs> God will never tell you anything that contradicts his word. This is important, Okay? This is why Abraham had boldness to go. Amen? Because he knew that God would never contradict the word. He said in verse 2, Genesis 22, verse 2, he says, Take now thy son, thy only son, the one I gave you. You know the one, the, the promised child, Isaac? You know the one that you waited 25 years for? You know the one that you didn't think was ever coming? You know the miracle birth that came uh, through Sarah who was already past the age of childbearing and she still had a baby? You know that son? If God never asks you for what you think is precious, you're not serving the real God. He's going to try to pry your fingers off of everything you, you hold so tight. He wants, he wants all of you, amen? He wants to know that no matter where you go and what happens in your life, He wants everything. He, he wants it all, amen? So, so our, our, really, our response is really not to hold, but to let go, right? He said, that son and get up to the land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon the mountains, which I will tell you of. And verse 3 is one of the greatest scriptures in all of the Bible. Verse 3, uh, he says, uh, it says, And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his donkey. I can't say that other word because it's kind of a cuss word. Okay, He saddled his donkey. Amen? He did it the next morning. He didn't do it the next afternoon. He didn't do it the next evening. He did it first thing in the morning. He, did it, he, he got up and went right away. Amen? The, the importance for establishing momentum in your life means I have to do it right away. I have to do it while the opportunity is there. Amen? I got to get up and I got to go now. Amen? I got to go now. I can't wait. If God speaks, I got to do it now. Amen? I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. If it's God, don't delay. If it's God, don't delay. Because it's disobedience if you do. Amen? Amen? So, so if it's God. See, 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 walking with God takes faith. It takes obedience, right? It says, I want you to say this with me. Listening is doing. Listening is doing. If God is speaking, I have to do it. Amen? I, I, I could say up here, there, there was a guy on, on YouTube one time, and he, 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 it was like a, a seven-minute, I think, video or something like that. I'll, I'll give him props, but he says, he, sa he stands there, and all he does is do this. He goes, do it. <laughs> do it. He does this for seven minutes. Do it. He just gets louder. Do it. Do it, do it, 
do it, do it. And it keeps getting louder all the time. Just do it. Just do something. <laughs> I think God sometimes is sitting up there. He's looking out here at me praying down here going, oh, God, you know, da, da, da. he's a, just do it. <laughs> just do it. I've already gave you everything you need to do it. And all you do is just sit there and whine and complain. Do it. Walking with God takes obedience. Amen? It takes obedience. I, I, I want to live with momentum in my life. Amen? I don't, I don't want to push the truck up a hill every day. I want to get it up somewhere, sometime where I can go, whoo! Amen? i got to get something moving. <laughs> I don't want to work. I just want to bang on the drum all day. I, I, I just don't want to see. <laughs> I don't want to sit here and never go there. Amen. I don't want to sit here with the dream. I don't want to just sit here with the, the purpose. I don't want to sit here with the, the destiny. I want to go and see what God can do. Amen. What would God do if we would just go? Amen? Good question, Pastor Everett. Every relationship has momentum. Every relationship has momentum. In John, John chapter 8, the Pharisees, they bring this, this woman. Uh, they, they set a trap for the woman, okay? And, and it says that she was caught in the very act of adultery. They were waiting on her to get there. And they drug her out in the very act, caught in the very act. They drug her out and they set a trap for a woman and they bring her to Jesus. And, and just say it with me. Say, that's a trap. See, so every good trap has the same thing. Good bait. <laughs> Amen? So if there's a trap, it's because there's good bait there, right? And, and each of us might have a different kind of flavor of bait, okay? But, but if there's a trap in your life, there's some good bait there for you. And you're gonna, if you're going to get in the trap, it's because you took the bait. Amen? And so, and so there's every, every trap has good bait. And so, so uh, it looks good, it sounds good, it feels good. Uh, and so they bring this woman to Jesus who seemingly is preoccupied. Jesus is preoccupied when they bring the woman there. Uh, he's got another plan, right? He's just drawn in the dirt uh, there and they bring the woman to Jesus and uh, he doesn't fall into the trap. Inside of the trap. Okay, I'm, I'm going to take you somewhere here for a second. So he, he does, Jesus don't fall into the trap, inside the trap. He instead takes the trap and sets a trap himself. Amen? He took the trap inside of the trap that was his trap and made another trap out of it for the ones who set the trap. Amen? And so, so he, 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 uses, uh, it, he uses that trap as bait. Come on now. He uses the trap as bait uh, to trap the trappers. Yeah. Woo! There's a lot of trap right here. A lot of trap talk. <laughs> this is called trap talk. I don't know what kind of talk you've all got. But the only, only way that Jesus knew this is because he had wisdom. Yeah. Not, not the kind of wisdom that we have. He had the kind of wisdom that come from God. He was God in the flesh. Yeah. God is wiser than the wisest man. He's got more knowledge than anybody else has. He, he, knows, uh, he knows our yesterday he knows our today, and He knows our tomorrow, amen? And so He's going to take us somewhere, but we've got to pay attention, amen? Uh, pay attention. And we've got to have the willingness to ask God for wisdom. Woo! Wisdom comes from where? Above, amen? doesn't come from me, doesn't come from you, it comes from above, amen? So I've got to take, take and get His wisdom. Jesus said, it's not about the law, it's about love. That's what He said. He said, not about the law, it's about love. He said, and so he, he sets this woman free. He said, he said after the wimp, everybody left, uh, everybody walked away, they, they, he said, where are all the accusers at? And she, and she said, they all gone. And he said, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Amen? He said, go though. Go, have momentum, all right? Don't, don't stay back in yesterday. Don't stay back in the problems that I've been through. Don't stay there in the bankruptcy. Don't stay there in the failed relationship. Get up and go and get another one. Amen? Take the wisdom that God gives you and go somewhere new. Amen? Let's take the trap that they set for me. The devil wants you to, he wants to kill you. 
He wants to destroy you. He wants to take away your hope and your joy. But I'm going to tell you today, you don't have to stay there anymore. Amen? You've got to take and turn your eyes off of that. Most of us glorify the devil's work in our life with our mouth. But we don't glorify God's work with our mouth like we should. We spend more time glorifying the work of the devil. And we need to be glorifying the, the Creator of heaven, the, the I Am in our life, the One who separates us from the world. Amen? He, we we got to glorify Him. Yeah. Woo! Praise break time. Hey! Hallelujah! Thank You, Lord, for what You've done in my life. Thank You for setting me free. It's not about the law, it's about love. It's about the heart. It's about your heart, amen? Give Him your heart, all of it, amen? Whew. Conviction in your heart doesn't release the intended pattern. Conviction in your heart doesn't release you from the intended pattern because we have an intention with the patterns of our life. Amen? Amen? I don't want to stay there anymore. I don't want to stay stuck. I don't want to stay in yesterday anymore. I want to go somewhere new. Amen? So, so uh, it, it just... Let me read it again. Conviction in your heart doesn't release the intended pattern. It just offers you an opportunity to change. Woo. Amen? Jesus came to change us. I want you to say that with me. Jesus came, Jesus came to change me. Change us. Whew. Turn to your neighbor and say, thank you. Thank you. Amen? Amen? Jesus didn't fall into a trap set by the trappers. Instead, he captured them by the wisdom of God. He started talking to them about Abraham. I'm bringing you back to Abraham, okay? He started talking to them about Abraham. And, and, and in James, in James 2, uh, 22 through 24, it says, and I don't have time to read all that to you, but he says, it says, uh, faith wrought with, with works. How faith wrought with work, his works, by works was he made perfect. Talking about Abraham. Abraham got up and went. Abraham looked at the stars uh, of the sky. Abraham looked at what he didn't have. He looked at God, not at what he didn't have. To, to receive something, and that's called faith. Amen? That's called faith. That's what we got to look at it with. Uh, the scripture was, uh, was fulfilled, which saith Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Say, say that with me. Friend, friend. of God. Uh, uh, in, if you keep reading uh, down in John, John chapter 8, Jesus said, I met Abraham. And the scribes and Pharisees looked at him and said, you're not even 50 years old. How is it that you met Abraham? You know? <laughs> See, because God isn't in time. Amen? He's, he's, he's in and out of time. Amen? He's outside of time. So, so Abraham met Jesus face to face. Amen? And I can talk to you about that later at another time, but, but that's how they became friends. They had a relationship. Amen? This is so important, uh, not just for Abraham and not just for Jesus, but for you and for me, to know that Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever, can meet with you today, amen? He can be your friend today, amen? He can walk with you today, amen? Because He's God, He's God. Say it with me, He's God. He's God. See, 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 <laughs> me magnifying God doesn't make God bigger. God is already big without me. Amen? God is bigger than my circumstance. Whether I think He is or not, He is. Amen? So, so I don't have to put a magnifying glass up, to the, up, to, up, to, up towards heaven and say, oh, God looks awful big this morning. Because He's big whether or not I perceive Him as big or not. Amen? God is big. If, if I wrote this a, a, few, uh, a few months ago, a few years ago, I think it was. I shared it a few months ago, but I said if I focus on me, I will never be satisfied because I perceive my needs are, are not constant. They change every day. The truth is, is that we're changing every day and my needs are changing every day, but I'm going to tell you that, that God can supply all of those needs, amen? And, and, and for God, God is for 
God, God is so in love with me. He's so in love with you more than I am in love with me. Or you are in love with you. Amen? Amen. God is love. Amen? So, so, one of the traps of a long-term relationship uh, is that you trade momentum for doldrums. One of the traps of a long-term relationship is that we trade momentum for doldrums. Doldrums is a sailing term, right? Where there's no wind blowing, you got a sailboat, you're out there in the middle of the ocean and you're like, what is going on? The wind ain't blowing. And you sit for days. No wind. You're up there like, <laughs> trying to get this thing to, to inflate. i got to get this boat moving, right? That's, that's what happens in a lot of long-term relationships. In, in Matthew verse 4, chapter 4, verse 19, Matthew chapter 4, verse 19, Jesus walks up on, Jesus walks up on two, two disciples, and he says, Follow me. He saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Jesus showed, set, gave them a command, and he told them the destination. And it says in verse 20, Matthew 4, verse 20, it says they got up and went right then. It says, it says and they straightway left their nets and followed him. Lo I love their response. They, they immediately did. They did exactly what Abraham did. They did exactly what Elisha did. Immediately responded to the call in their life. Amen? Say it with me. I, I, I need to respond. So, so, so they, they, they immediately, and they didn't delay. A after Peter denied Jesus, after Peter denied Jesus, he, he, after uh, Jesus was crucified, after Jesus rose again, after Jesus appeared to the disciples, after uh, the, he had the do you love me talk. <laughs> Good talk, Jesus. <laughs> Say that with me. Good talk, Jesus. Sometimes we, we have been walking with God for so long. I, I got saved when I was 11. Sometimes we walk with God so long and we say, good talk, Jesus. Man, that, that preacher was on fire today or that was a great worship service and I, I just can't wait. But, but if we, 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 just, we just go, good talk, good talk, good talk, good talk. And we go on about our life. And G, Jesus says, after he says, do you love me, Peter? He, he tells Peter that this is how you're going to die. <laughs> what a great conversation. <laughs> you're going to die, Peter. And, and Peter, Peter says, I, I love his response because he turns and he says, well, what about him? Because that's our response too. We, we, we detract from what God is trying to do in our life and we focus on somebody else. And them, them other people don't have the same call you have. Them other people don't have the, 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 the relationship that you have with, with Jesus. And, and if Jesus is going to take your life, and he's going to put you upside down on a cross like he did with Peter, glory to God. Amen? If, if he's going to put you on a, on a platform and, and make you a singer, great. Glory to God. If he's going to take you out to a street corner somewhere and you're going to preach the gospel message, glory to God. If he's going to take you home and teach you how to raise somebody, glory to God. Amen? If he's going to, if he's going to put you on the internet and you're just going to blog or something, glory to God. Amen? But, but it's really not about me or you. Amen? It's about response. Okay? It's about response. And, 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 whew. Jesus says, John 21, verse 19, again, Jesus says, follow me. I, I only bring this up because it's easy to follow him before you're offended, before you've been disappointed, before God does something you don't really think he should have done. It's easy to follow him up to then, but then we get stuck in the doldrums and we won't go as quickly as we're supposed to, okay? 
I know that I'm supposed to. I know I should. But I don't. That's disobedience. And, and I'm here today to remind you. That's all I'm here for. To remind you that we are called to go. Amen? 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 Amen. And, and, and you're called to grow. Amen? Amen? That's why I'm here. That's my message today. It, it was good for Elisha. It was good for Abraham. It was good for Peter. It was good for me too. Amen? And, amen? And, and, and if it's good for all of them all, all them all crazy people, amen? All them old crazy people that walk by faith and not by sight, it's good enough for me, amen? And, and together, if we join hand in hand, amen, and begin to go together, amen, we will see momentum begin to occur, amen? We will see a, 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 a landslide of souls being won for the kingdom of God, amen? We will see a nation turned around. I, I just want to see Rockford turned around. I just want to see Rockford saved. I, I want to see the people change in this town. Amen? He just calls one man. <laughs> what, can I, what difference can I make? I don't know. Go make a difference and let's see. Glory to God. Amen? Okay. I had to tie a bow. <laughs> I have a lot that I need to say, but I can't say it all. So I'm going to say some of it, okay? Following Jesus is easy. I want you to say that with me. Following Jesus, Following Jesus. is easy. <laughs> I just have to do what he says. Amen? The key to that is I have to hear his voice. Amen? Amen? And one of the things that happens in our life, uh, we have these barriers that pop up in our life that keep us from hearing God's voice. And so I want to go through a few barriers, okay? And um, uh, uh, the first one is ignorance. <laughs> so turn to your neighbor <laughs> and just tell him, say, I know you're not ignorant. <laughs> you thought I was going to go the other way with that. <laughs> My wife was worried. <laughs> But ignorance of God's word and his will for my life, come on, will keep me from going. Amen? If I'm ignorant, I won't go. Right? Say it with me. If I'm ignorant, I won't go. The second one is unbelief. Unbelief. Like, like I, I, I'm not going to go if I don't believe. Amen? I, I'm not going to worship like I should if I don't believe. I, I'm, I'm not going to pray the way I should pray if I don't believe, right? I, I, I need to have belief, right? Uh, it, it, I think in most of our cases, it's not about not having any faith. Because we have faith, okay? Our faith is going to fail. <laughs> it's that we, we, don't, we don't apply faith in our life, amen? Faith. Faith. Say, God, I know in your word it says that you will never leave me and that you will never forsake me, but yet I feel forsaken and alone. So I must apply faith to my life, to my circumstance, and say, I feel like this right now, God, but I believe what your word says, that I am not forsaken and I am not alone. See, that's applying faith. Amen? So, so I, walk, I walk by faith, right? Not in unbelief. Amen? Yeah. Come on. So, so I have to remove that obstacle called unbelief from my life. Amen? I have to remove ignorance. Okay? i always be this way because my whole family's always been this way. No. That's ignorant of what the will of God is for your life. Amen? Yeah. Go find you a scripture verse. Go find you a scripture verse, amen? Uh, I, go find it and, and put it out. Write it down. Go, go to Ephesians and just start writing everything God says about you on, out of the book of Ephesians. Just, just start right there. Say, say, I am his masterpiece, amen? Yeah. Uh, write it down, amen? And, 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 then, and then begin to apply that to your life, amen? Apply that to the next thing uh, in, in the area of unbelief. Uh, uncontested sin. Some of us stay in a pattern of sin 
And we don't come against that in the name of Jesus. Amen? So we remain uh, in whatever pattern that is. Uh, it, it could be, uh, you know, maybe you're uh, online looking at pornography. Maybe you're uh, spending too much time with your cell phone. Idolatry. You know, yesterday, I, yesterday I took my cell phone and I set it down uh, for three hours and I was telling myself, I said, like, I feel like I don't know what to do right now. <laughs> I set my phone down for three hours. And, I, and, I, and, and then it felt so good after three hours, I set it down for three more hours. Great. Wow. I did it two times in one day. Great. And I said to myself, I said, what am I going to do? What, what do I do with my hands? <laughs> what if somebody tried to call me? Somebody did try to call me. You know what? I got it when I got to it. Yeah. The Lord. Amen? Yeah. So, so some, sometimes we got to get out of the, the pattern. Yeah. 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 Okay? Might just look like putting your cell phone down. Right. Amen? Yeah. Uh, disconnecting from, from whatever it is I think is so important. Amen? Stop watching the news, okay? Don't go over to that. Don't go to the bar anymore. Amen. Don't don't pick up the cigarettes anymore. Don't you know, start contesting these areas in our life. Amen. Stand firm in the Lord. Amen. Resist the devil, steadfast in the faith, and he will flee. Amen. Amen. Okay. Uncontested sin. So so say it with me. I I'm going to repent, and I'm going to change. <laughs> Amen. Amen? And so, so uh, the number four, th four thing is unforgiveness. This, this, is not, uh, this is not this relationship with God it's, that I'm speaking of. It's the relationship with others. Is there somebody in your life that you haven't forgiven? Is there somebody in your life that you haven't let off the hook? You know? That you keep carrying. Yeah, yeah we talked about this yesterday a little bit, right? You have the offender who don't care and you have the offended who has to bear the weight, okay? I'm going to tell you, Jesus bears the weight of all of your sin, amen? So no matter how offended you are, Jesus is more offended, amen? Come on now, by your sin. So, Father, forgive me. He says, I forgive you. I carry the weight. And yet, yet we can't forgive someone else, amen? This is tough. This is a blocker, though. If you want God to begin to do miracles in your life, you've got to go through and remove these blockages. Amen? Very, very true. The, the number five is the occult involvement. Like, like, you know, horoscopes and mysticisms, worshiping another Christ. This happens a lot in churches, okay? In America and all over the place. We, we, we raise up this, this idea and we expect God to bless the idea but God isn't going to bless the idea, amen? He's going to bless, it, bless us because we are His sons, amen? Because we are saved and set free and sanctified. I worship the true and living God, amen? The God of the Bible, amen? The one, I, I read His Word, I know the difference, amen? Come on. I'm not going to worship another Christ, the Antichrist. I'm not worshiping my cell phone, am I? I'm asking the question. I'm not worshiping an idea, a concept, a business plan. I'm worshiping God. Amen? Amen. The one who gave his life for me. Amen? Amen. And Freemasonry uh, or, or false religion, okay? Because many people, uh, we read our Bible, we pray our prayers, and we walk around like this. And we're better than everybody else. The truth is, is you're not any better. I'm no better than you are. You're no better than me. Amen? We serve the same God. Amen? God, you might have a different revelation of who God is, but, but I want to have the same God that we worship together in this room. Amen? Amen. At Breakthrough Church. Amen? Amen? There's only one God. Say it with me. There's only one God. Amen. And He wants a relationship. Say it with me. He wants a relationship with me. Amen? Say it. Say it. He wants a relationship. Say it again. Say, say there's only one God. And he wants a relationship with me. Did you know that you only have one life to live? Why don't you give your life, the whole, your whole life to God? Young people, why don't you give your whole life to God? Why don't you challenge, challenge the Lord? Say, God, if I gave you all of my life, what, would you, what could you do with my life? You know what? I want to know. What can he do with your life? Amen? What can he do with the rest of my life? Amen? 
And then the, the last thing is witchcraft. Witchcraft. Witchcraft is us taking our flesh and saying, I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to let God make it happen for me. Amen? I'm going to trust Him at His word. I'm going to walk with Him. Amen? If He takes it all away from me. Hey, God has taken it all away from me before. Amen? He's taken it all away from me before because He can have it all. Amen? It's all His anyways. Amen? He wants to bring me in. That's fine. He wants to take me out. That's fine. Amen? I'm going to go where he, where he says go. Come on, Abraham. Come on, Peter. Come on, come on, Elisha. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Amen? In Samuel, 1 Samuel 15, 23, it says, uh, For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Can I say it another way? Disobedience. It's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to serve you, God, as long as you give me this. As long as you do that for me. God, as long as it's going good, I'm going to keep going to that church. As long as they keep singing my song in the right key for me, I'm going to keep going to that church. You know, you know the, the truth is, is that I, I don't want to be in rebellion. I want to be in obedience. That comes through surrender. Amen? It really does. And, so, and, so, uh, and then he goes on to say, uh, he says it like this. Uh, Joanne says it different. She does it with the kids, and she says... One way, and it's Jesus. I don't know how she does it. One way, Jesus. I don't know how she does it. You're the only one that I can live for. One way, Jesus. You're the only one that I can live for. See, I don't want to live in rebellion. I don't want, to, I don't want God. And, and, and it goes on to say, 1 Samuel 15, 23, it says, Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected thee from being king. Saul got removed from being king because he was trying to do it another way. Amen? Amen? And then I got one more verse, and I'm going to shut up. I'll go home. We have our pizza or whatever you're going to have for lunch. Uh, uh, in, in Revelations 1, verse 5 and 6, it says, And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, the prince of the kings of the earth, the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and hath made us to be kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. God gets the glory. Come on now for the great things He has done in my life. God gets glory. But God doesn't just give you... He, he gives you the option to be the king. Amen? Come on now. This planet needs to have kings. Amen? Who will stand and testify about the goodness of God. Who will trust God for, for, for something brand new on the earth. Amen? Who, who, will, who will stand and say, you know what, God? I believe that you brought me here right now. I'm going to listen to you. I'm going to follow you. And I'm going to go and I'm going to do what you called me to do. Would you stand with me? I'm going to pray for us and then we can be done. Ooh. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we worship you right now. We give you our heart, Lord. We give you our mind, Lord. So there's somebody online right now that, that needs to needs to pray a prayer of salvation. And so we're just going to pray uh, with them as a family. Uh, and so let's just pray. So Father, in Jesus' name, we ask you to come into our heart, come into our, our, our life, come and be Lord, come and take ownership of everything. I give you my whole life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer right now, I believe that you're saved. And I believe that this is the first day of the rest of your life. Jesus didn't just come here and die uh, just for one of us. He came and died for all of the planet, the whole, whole of the earth. Every, every person, whosoever will, uh, can receive him. And so we, we're so grateful that you did that. We're so grateful that you're a part of the family. Uh, and if, you, if, you're, if, if that's you online, 
uh, we want to connect with you wherever you are right now. We want you to uh, put it uh, in the comments. Say, I just prayed that prayer of salvation. I just want to thank the Lord uh, for all that he's doing uh, at Breakthrough Church, and I want to be a part of that. And so we, we want to connect with you, uh, whoever you are, wherever you are, all over the, 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 all over the world because it's not just about a room full of people anymore, it's about uh, all of the world at the same time. We can, uh, anybody can touch, uh, be touched by this, this little service from this little room. And so right now in Jesus' name, I just thank you, Father. I thank you, Father, for the message, Lord, the message of grace, Father. The call is to go. The call is to not stay stuck anymore. Father, I thank you, Lord, that, that you would open our eyes to a, the traps that are in our life, Father, that we would begin to look uh, for the wisdom that comes from above and we begin to walk and to trust you like never before. So, Father, we're asked, Lord, that you loose our ears tonight, today, Lord. Father, open our eyes today, Lord. Uh, release a, a new word into our heart, Lord. Yeah. Father, give us courage, Lord, to not stay stuck anymore in the doldrums, Father, of, a, of, our, of our past, Father, but to trust that you're, you're going to take us uh, to a new place, Father. To a new destination father for 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 your glory and for your honor and your praise lord and so father we're we just want you to know today that we are willing lord father that we are available to you right now father and we're trusting god that you're you're changing us even in this very moment god you're 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 helping us father to 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 step out in faith lord like never before god so so speak to our heart lord speak to our life god here we are, God. Change us, God, in this moment, God. Move us, God. Father, we're going to move, God. You, you just speak a word and we'll go, Lord. Father, we'll go by that building, Father. We're, go, we're going to go, we're gonna go, in, uh, uh, go overseas, Father. We're going to get on the airplanes, Father. We're going to do what we got to do to reach the lost for the kingdom of God, Lord. Father, so we pray, Lord, now for fresh revelation. Father, for a fire that would come and consume us, Lord. You are a consuming fire, Lord. So come and consume what needs to be consumed. Take away the things that need to go away. Burn them up, Father, like chaff, Lord. Father, that we can walk up, not, not with fear, not with timidity, Lord, but with power, Lord, for the kingdom of God. So it so determines us, Father. Father, we must rise. We must go. Father, so we're not going to sit on our laurels anymore. We're not going to sit on our blessed assurance anymore. We're going to get up, Father, and we're going to go in spite of our, all the things, Father. Let the weights fall. Let the weights fall, Lord, and let us trust you again like it was at the beginning, Father, like our first love, Lord. Help us to fall in love with your word. Help us to fall in love with you again, Lord. And I thank you, Father, for the call. The call is great, Lord. Father, I know that it will cost us our life, Father, but our life does not belong to us, Father. It belongs to you because you are the Lord and the Savior of us, uh, Father. So come and make us courageous. I bind and break every fear right now. I bind and break it in Jesus' name. I plead the blood of Jesus right now over the people, the people of God in this room, the people of God that are online watching. I, I plead the blood of Jesus over us right now. Father, that you would give us a fresh revelation today of who you are, God. Father, that we would go, Father, and take the mountaintop, Lord. Go and take, take the land, God. Devil, we set, we set you on notice right now. We say right now in Jesus' name, you are defeated. You are defeated in our life, Father. We're removing every obstacle right now in the spirit realm right now. And we, we command them to fall right now in Jesus' name. Father, we command them to fall. Finances open up right now in Jesus' name. Influence open up right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, God. Woo! Woo! Thank you, Lord, for the miracle. I thank you for the miracle, Lord. Woo! Glory to God. Glory to God. I believe, God, that you can do anything, God. I believe right now there's faith in the room, God. Father, that you can do anything, God. We're, we're asking for a shift, Lord, on the planet, Lord. Shift it in the planet, Lord. Come on, Lord. Come on and do it, God. Glory to God. Glory to God in the highest. Father, we thank you, Father, Lord, that there's a new thing going to happen here, God. There's a new thing going to happen right now, God. Woo! 
I just hear the word miracles right now. So I'm, I'm just going to believe God for miracles, Father. I believe right now that you're doing miracles, Father. I believe that you can do anything, Father. So we worship you, Lord, the God of miracles. The God of miracles, we worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for joy again, Lord. Thank you for peace again, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for new relationships, Lord. Woo, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for setting the captives free. Thank you for setting the captives free, Lord. Father, thank you, Father. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Woo. Oh, Heavenly Father. Oh, God, I will say again. Thank you, Lord. Something has to break. Something has to break. I feel him in this room and something has to break. Something has to break. Something has to break. I come against depression right now in the name of Jesus. I break, your, I break the back of depression off of your people's life. I break it right now in the name of Jesus. Depression, you've got to go in the name of Jesus. Depression, you got to go in the name of Jesus. Depression, up and out right now in the name of Jesus. Spirit of infirmity, I come against you right now in the name of Jesus. Up and out, up and out in the name of Jesus. Come up and out in Jesus' name. Spirit of infirmity, you got to go right now. You got to go right. Inflammation, you got to go right now in the name of Jesus. I come against you. Uh, the, the blood of Jesus is against you right now. Inflammation, come up and out in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Break, 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 break. Come on. Come on, break it. We break it right now. Come on, break it. Call it out right now. Just tell it. Gotta go right now. Break it. Break it. You you have the authority. I don't I don't have any more authority than you have. You tell the devil. You say, devil. You get out of my relationships. Devil, you get out of my bank account. Devil, you got to get out of get out of my workplace. Get out of my business. Get out of get out of my ha- my family. Get out of my house, God. You got to get out of there. Break it. We break your hold right now in Jesus name. You we de- you are defeated. out of here different I might have come in bound but I'm walking out I'm walking out free I might have walked in down but I'm gonna walk out up I might have walked in here depressed but I'm walking out with joy not with just a little joy I'm, I got joy unspeakable and full of glory I'm gonna walk out of here change I'm not ever gonna be the same I, I, I curse the old man right now I, I mortify the deeds of this body right now in Jesus name and I stand up today fresh and new, forgiven and set free, healed, whole, every bit whole. Mm. Jesus at the pool of Bethesda stepped over a lot of sick people to get to just one man. Got to just one man, and he said to that man, he said, he said, sir, <laughs> do, you, do you even want to be whole? Do you want to be whole? Yeah, he made a lot of excuses just like we do. He make a lot of excuses too. Let's not pick on that guy. What about me? What excuse have I made? What have I not done? And all that man did, Jesus never touched that man. 
he just, that man said, Jesus said, I'll just do it. So he picked up what was keeping him held down. And he just started walking. What if you just start walking today? What if you just did it? Just say, you know, I'm going to start walking with you today. You know what, God? I'm going to walk today with you. I'm going to go with you. <laughs> I want to be whole. Hey, there's a miracle in the room, and it's got my name on it. That's not the right key or the not right chord. But there is a miracle in this room for you, and it has your name on it. Amen. Do you receive that? That's the question. Do you receive that? Do you receive it? Say, yes, Lord. I receive it. Help my unbelief. <laughs> it's okay to tell the Lord, I don't really fully believe it, but I want to. Amen? It's okay because he knows it anyway. presence of the Lord here. Ooh. Ooh. I break down every false idol. I break down every false idol. We tear them down today. Let the real God rise up. Let the real Spirit of God come. Let the real God, oh, Holy Spirit come and cleanse us. Take a coal, Lord. Touch our lips and cleanse us, Father. Here we are, Lord, send us. Here we are, Lord, send us. We want to go, Lord. We want to go to all of the world. We want to preach and teach, make disciples, and teach them everything that you've taught us, Father. Father, we want to go, Lord. We don't want to stay back anymore. We don't be held back anymore. Father, we're downtown Rockford, Illinois right now in the armpit of America, Father. Father, I thank you, Lord, for put, positioning us in the right place, Lord. Father, for bringing us to the right place doorway God for bringing us to the right platform Lord for setting up for setting us up for success Lord but now we just step out in faith in the name of Jesus we break it all off right now everything everything fresh and new today God fresh revelation Lord speak to us remove every roadblock remove every hindrance Father Every hindering spirit, every blessing blocker has to go in the name of Jesus. We break it right now. The power of the enemy, the trap, Father, that he set for us. The word says that he'll fall into his own trap, Father. So, Father, uh, we just say, we, we speak over every illegal word that has been spoken over us. Every curse that has been sent our way. And we say this in, a, in the power of the Holy Spirit. We say, return to sender. Return to sender, Lord. Send it all back, Father. Uh, we return the arrows of the enemy back upon themselves, Father. Lord, let them fall into their own trap, Lord. Father, go ahead and release us, God. Release us from the curse, Lord. We break the curse right now. Uh, back ten, ten generations on our, on our mom's side and on our dad's side. We break it right now. And Father, we declare that we are your people. We are called by your name. We have humbled ourselves under the hand of an almighty God. And God, we're asking you to be, uh, uh, be obedient to your word and heal the land, Father. Heal the land that we walk on, Father. Father, open the door for a building, Lord. This is the year we buy a building. This is the year we get property. This is the year we set up a tent. Father, this is the year where we have revival, not, not just in us, but in, in a group. Father, this is the year that we will see God do a many mighty things. This is the year we will see miracles. I believe that with all my heart. I believe that God is going to open that door in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Greater is He that is in us than he that is in the world. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. According to your faith, so be it unto you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Woo. Amen. I'm not going anywhere, but I gotta let y'all go. If you gotta go, I'm gonna. I don't. I don't like to dismiss. I, I like some. This this whole pastor. He said. He said. I don't dismiss the service anymore. I just say till I see you next time. 
but but if you got to go you got to go amen and so if you got to go you're dismissed but uh we love you i just want you to know that we love you if you need prayer uh you want to talk to me or whatever i'm gonna be up here i'm not gonna go run away from you uh, i just love what god is doing i'm excited and i'm, I'm just looking for whatever it is that's coming because there's something big coming amen amen god bless you Woo.